Tangential tooling. I've been asked quite a few times if I've ever tried it and whether or not I like it. And the answer to that is no. I haven't tried it, nor have I ever actually seen one in action. So I'd really like to change that and see what all the fuss is about. Now if you don't know what a tangential tool is, let's quickly look at this right hand tool that I ground a while back. To make even the most basic tool, I had to grind three faces to generate the usable cutting geometry. And whilst it doesn't seem too complicated, there is a bit of nuance in the exact shape you need to grind and how you maintain it. Tangential tooling aims to reduce the amount of grinding that you have to do to one face really. The top, or I guess the end of the tool of this high speed steel, is the only face that you need to grind. The theory is that we can hold this blank pretty much vertically maybe tilt it back a few degrees to create the relief and rake angles, and the only face we'd have to resharpen would be the top, at least in theory. Now seeing as I've never done this before, I'll go ahead and make a tool holder with no relief, and I'll add the geometry as we go. And that's pretty much as basic as it gets. It's a little small, but I don't have that much big stock, so I'll do the first test in this. I'll do the first test cuts in acrylic, I should be able to gauge if the tool cuts correctly, and it should also keep the cutting forces pretty low. The first thing that I noticed was that this 60mm long high speed steel tool blank was just too long for the mini lathe. It was hitting the cross slide, so I'll need to go ahead and cut that down later. Now this is the standard edge that you get with a high speed steel blank. I haven't done anything to it and it's already decently sharp. For a vertical chunk of high speed steel, that was pretty respectable. The plunge cut gave us a pretty decent service finish, but cutting into it towards the chuck, there was a lot of rubbing. On a regular tool, I'd grind the relief into the tool, but what I can do here is just tilt the high speed steel tool in the holder to effectively give us the same effect. And I gotta say, that's a pretty sketchy looking tool holder. I hand filed it so that the tool tilts backwards in both directions. And I have to hand it to it, that was a lot better than it was before. It cuts like a lathe tool and it's leaving a half decent surface. What I'd like to do next is grind the top of the high speed steel lathe tool to give it back and side rake. Usually people make a simple jig, just a block or an angled block with a V groove in it that they can hold up against a grinding wheel. With an end mill, you'll always have a slight corner radius, so I removed the material using the high speed steel tool, scraping the bottom line the same way as a shaper machine might. And with that done, I'll place it up against a bench grinder. The top of the tool is the cutting edge, and we want the face to slope away from it. And that's our cutting tool. A cool effect of grinding the top so that it's sloping back is we've now created the clearance angles so that the cutting edge doesn't rub on the material. The square cross section at an angle is more of a diamond shape now, and that's why these tools are often called diamond tools.
And once again, we got an improvement to the cutting of the tool. There's no more rubbing with the cutting edges, so that clearance is working. Of course, this is only in plastic, so let's go ahead and make a proper tool cutter that's a little bit more robust and substantial. At times like this, I could really go for a vise with a swivel base. Now I need to cut a slot which leans back in two directions. I loaded the part in my great great grandfather's machinist vise and I held it in my vise at about a 10 degree angle to create that sloping back in two directions. Looking at the front, it's not as much material as I thought I would have, and I think I might have made a mistake somewhere. And to no one's surprise, that very quickly bent. However, it seemed to be cutting quite decently before it did that. For having such a sharp nose radius, it's also giving us a pretty good surface finish. However, I could feel a fair amount of force on the tool, due to a lot more stick out being needed on this tool, compared to a lot of my other high speed steel tools. What I'll do now is rethink the tool holder, and I'll come back and I'll give it another go. So I went back and made a similar style tool holder. The front material that previously bent was made a lot thicker and it now locks using two washers that are clamped down that pull the high speed steel tool into the tool holder. The tolerances are a lot more tighter now. It's pretty much an interference fit. I really had to hammer the high speed steel into the tool holder. And that's cutting a lot better than it used to. I maxed out at about 0.75mm depth of cut in steel, and it's cutting really well for a high speed steel tool in this lathe. I still want to modify the clamping system though. I want the tool to be the furthest part sticking out, not the clamp or the clamping system, or it might rub up against the work. I used a hacksaw to cut away the bulk of the material, and I'll now clean it up in the mill. I've added a grub screw to lock the tool in place. I could only add one at the top since I had to drill through the front. I didn't have a long enough drill to go through from the other direction. And that was cutting a lot better. Considering how sharp this tool is, we're getting a very good surface finish, and a good amount of clearance on the front and side of the tool. I've ground a decent amount of high speed steel tools over the years, and whilst it's not the best, it's a very decent tool, and it's very easy to sharpen. On a bigger lathe that has a bigger swing, this might be a very useful tool, but on this lathe, the small swing does limit the life of the high speed steel tool planks that I'm using, which is an issue. 
What I'll probably do in the future is use this tool for mostly used up high speed steel tool blanks that are just too small to be used conventionally. So I guess expect this tool to be used in the future. I'm not going to use it exclusively, but it will probably pop up every now and then. Anyway, with that, I hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you learned something new. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.